Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Sirli. Um, I'm Chief of Growth at Partiza Blockchain Foundation, which I joined two months ago. But I've been building uh, blockchain ecosystems for the past five years, and I'm in the space since now six, seven years, uh, being based out of Switzerland to uh, Crypto Valley. And uh, Partiza Blockchain has been around for a while, and the Partiza infrastructure, that is the development company behind the foundation, um, started in 2008, building out uh, decentralized products and solutions before even the Bitcoin white paper. And uh, Partiza is uh, leveraging on multi-party computation, which is a uh, 35 years old technology. And one of our founders, co-founders, uh, Ivan Damgard, whose name you might heard of the Damgard, uh, Merkel Damgard hash function, that is the basis of SHA algorithm and blockchains. Uh, uh, is, uh, is behind that multi-party computation technology and we have thousands of research papers so uh, we have uh, united those two distributed technologies uh, to enable privacy and uh, stronger trust in decentralized systems and um, coming back to the title of today's topic, uh, Beyond Zero Knowledge Proofs, which are recently the most trendy keywords or buzzwords in the space. Everybody are adding it to their technology and, um, and why privacy is needed to enable stronger trust in digital societies. So uh, let's start off uh, with the basics. Um, our society is deeply dependent on trust and uh, whether it is between friends or family members or governmental bodies and its citizens or companies doing business together. And it's a very lengthy process and it's give and take. So it requires some element of uh, risk, um, vulnerability, because each individual in order to create trust has to give bits, of, uh, bits and pieces of information and data out about them. Um, and hoping that the other counterparty will not uh, use it uh, on their favor or um, um, we're coming to a dilemma in, in a sense where both fully anonymous systems and fully um, transparent systems are actually breaking down trust. So, for example, if you illustrate it with uh, real world uh, examples, then uh, if I have a dating profile without any photo or my name or information on it, it's very highly unlikely that I get any matches. Or if I'm to take a loan from a bank, but I'm not willing to give any information out about my income statement or any other open credit lines, uh, I will be, there is no way I'm getting a loan from the bank. And it goes the other way around. If, uh, if the bank is not willing to provide me information about the uh, credit, uh, interest rate, uh, the expense of the loan, I will not get into that partnership or collaboration with the bank either. So in another example where too much transparency creates a uneven playing field and malicious behavior is uh, with the problem which we are facing right now in Web3 and in Ethereum ecosystem uh, on automated uh, market makers and uh, DEXs like uh, Uniswap and SushiSwap, where uh, arbitration bots are able to monitor what's happening on, on the order books uh, as all the smart contracts uh, of trades are fully public and transparent for the bots to then play speeds. And that creates an uneven playing field where these bots are um, monetizing uh, on the people's and users' expense. So how, the big question is how do we build trust without actually uh, revealing confidential information about ourselves, but also not, uh, uh, whilst uh, not being fully anonymous either. So uh, if you look at the current centralized model, how data is being shared and processed and analyzed, and, uh, or what is in corporate lingo called data lakes, um, each counterparty has to put some uh, private information in, in a data pool, which is actually uh, controlled and governed by central authority. Um, also, when we talk about building trust and sharing information, it's uh, very down to individual risk profile and um, risk appetite. Um, so these are these limitations and risks. Uh, 
considered to the traditional uh, ways of um, sharing data. And the central data authorities might use it um, to monetize on it. Um, uh, there is for sure a single point of failure, which can be a, causing a data breach and data leak. And there is also limited collaboration between different institutions and even competitors who actually might get, a, as a result, an interesting insight if they are able to process different uh, uh, information. Um, so we're facing a limited collaboration or, or non-existing collaboration uh, through the traditional methods. And what we're able to do through multi-party computation or a form of zero-knowledge computation is uh, create a collaboration between mutually distrustful parties. So we're able to share data and process on it whilst keeping the data itself private. So we're able to, able to share the use of data, but not the data itself. So there will be no uh, central authority of data. And this is, this is essential. Uh, lacking component in nowadays blockchains, there is no uh, decentralized control of data and um, and therefore we're not able to, um, I mean with the increase of GDPR and uh, increasing data protection rules, we have to solve it somehow. So multi-party computation is the perfect solution to that problem and we're enabling full collaboration and new insights uh, and results uh, coming out of that uh, new way of data analytics. So what Partisa is introducing is a extended blockchain trilemma, um, addition to the original one consisting of scalability, uh, centralization and security. Um, we're, in, we're, we're adding to the mix uh, also uh, interoperability and privacy, which are the core elements we're working on. Uh, we're achieving scalability and true scalability through um, complete sharding. So whenever there is a network congestion, we are getting dynamic um, new shard. Each shard operates as an independent blockchain. So it differentiates um, significantly what others that are using a sharding mechanism uh, are doing. So we're able to achieve complete uh, real transaction finality in just 0 0.3 seconds. Um, and, uh, and infinite transaction throughput. Um, with interoperability, and I'm coming back to that later on, um, we have uh, implemented decentralized um, MPC protected bridge and uh, bridges between different ecosystems. So we're all about collaboration over competition. And also we have decoupled our own token MPC coin uh, from uh, being a payment fee for the uh, smart um, contracts from being a store of value only. So you're, you need to acquire um, MPC only to set up a node in order to process different uh, operations on chain, but you have to bring or users uh, are able to bring other uh, liquid tokens in order to process uh, transactions. Um, so, and our core element privacy, which is uh, achieved through multi-party computation, um, is uh, also being offered as service. So we're, as I mentioned, it's all about collaboration over competition. We're offering our multi-party competition to other ecosystems through the bridges. So they don't even have to bring their smart contracts over. They can only process uh, for their, some of their use cases the, where they need to compute on privacy. Uh, they can implement that on our multi-party computation node and, and, and finalize their transactions on their own native um, layer ones. So um, we have united this all in one perfect package. So anyone can just step into the Partiza blockchain and leverage uh, on a scalable, interoperable uh, privacy uh, blockchain where you can customize. Uh, it's, it's, you can customize certain elements can be private, certain can be public. Uh, and we have just created a perfect um, environment for developers where they can script uh, smart contracts uh, leveraging on MPC. Um, and yeah, um, coming back to the title of the speech, uh, Beyond Zero Knowledge Proofs, I think it's important to define what the difference uh, is. So uh, CK proofs uh, are basically on a high level um, 
were able to prove that we have a piece of information without actually revealing and exposing the actual data. And um, the limitations to that are that we can only have input from one party and one certain input and reveal um, or have an output as uh, true or false or yes or no. For example, we can prove that we are vaccinated or that we are above a certain age, but we are not able to, for example, process on what kind of vaccination it was, when was it and so on. Uh, so this is where multi-party computation enables um, much bigger variety of um, use cases. Um, as we are able to process uh, on hundreds of different data from hundreds of different uh, participants um, or even thousands and have uh, as complex outputs as possible. Um, and uh, coming back to the elements I spoke about before in our extended blockchain trilemma, uh, we built an MPC secured, which is one of the most secure bridges out there. Um, and uh, through the decoupled economy, token economy, we're also enabling other uh, applications that are built on Ethereum or Polygon or Cardano uh, have a fixed uh, overhead cost by bridging their tokens over to Bertiza ecosystem, because uh, in our uh, ecosystem the transaction fees are fixed, so you can project your uh, overhead costs as a business and uh, and and also uh, benefit on the instant finalization and uh, unlimited transaction throughput through complete sharding. Um, so if we come back to use cases and Pratisa has been working with different NGOs, uh, in institutions and government bodies uh, for years now. Um, for example, uh, we've so in, in the advertisement we have uh, we have projects where people are able to use uh, or monetize the use of their data without revealing full data sets. So they're giving out only uh, certain bits of it through MPC, and this really brings back the power and control uh, to users and individuals uh, over the use of their. Uh, information. Um, some use cases are in the internet search field. Uh, we're able to privatize internet search by um, customizing the uh, user experience with more um, accurate advertisement targeting. Um, one of the biggest uh, projects we built was uh, for Red Cross, International Committee of Red Cross. Um, where we substituted their cash and voucher assistance with um, payment solution uh, in stable coins where the beneficiary is private, but the Red Cross is able to track down the utilization and uh, uses of these funds. Um, and it's important because the beneficiaries are already in a very vulnerable situation in the crisis zones and it's important to keep their um, identity uh, private and anonymous. Another big partnership we just launched was with um, Swiss EID solution. So uh, Swiss government is uh, committing to uh, decentralize uh, the control of user cred credentials. So we're building um, out a Swiss EID solution where people can uh, opt in which type of data they want to share with which institutions and are in full control over the sharing and an analyzing of um, their individual uh, data. Um, and I have uh, one minute more. So some of the other use cases, um, we, we did collaboration with uh, eTrusty which is a solution for uh, procurement and uh, bidding processes uh, where the bids, individual bids are uh, private, uh, but the, it's uh, built out in a decentralized way, um, eliminating the unfair uh, playing field and uneven playing field. And uh, now we just launched a um, partnership with the first ever uh, AMM on Partizia, TerraBlock, that is building the First, uh, zero knowledge uh, decks on uh, Bertisa chain, eliminating the problem of front running. Um, 
And there are several use cases I encourage you to check out on our Medium, where, uh, where all these use cases are explained. And we just launched a hackathon on DevBost. Uh, so if you have any developers in the audience, then we are uh, giving out uh, prizes up to $20,000 uh, to build out solutions, leveraging on our technology. And uh, check out more on purchaseablockchain.com. And uh, feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, thank you.